Welcome to episode three of the Legacy Warrior Podcast, where we help you become the best version of yourself and elevate your legacy using the exact tools we use to transform ours. I, babe, I can't wait to get in this conversation, Stephanie, because I know you got a lot to offer in here. Oh, yeah. We have a lot of stuff today. So today we're going to be talking about communication and the importance of how we communicate not only with others to create loving relationships, but more importantly, how we communicate with ourselves. And you know what's wild is I think when people think communication, they're like, yeah, we were talking about it earlier. And you said people just say, well, just you just need to communicate better. Yeah. And to me, that's not clear at all. So we, we hope to give you some like practical steps and examples, concrete examples. So you'll walk away knowing exactly what we mean by communication. Yeah. And the thing is, with, you know, without tangible things that people can take away today and actually utilize to create better communication with themselves and thus other people, because first you got to be communicating with yourself in a healthy way. We're just going to continue to be in this cycle that ends up being generational where divorce is prevalent, where broken relationships are prevalent, where children grow up in environments where two adults can't even hardly say hi to each other because the drip of resentment is so heavy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we want to make it to where you have a very healthy relationship and can be a great example for your kids. And yeah, because we don't want kids to grow up with that, thinking that that's normal or healthy because it's not. Yeah. I think it, the measure of success, if you're going to have massive success in life, this is wild, right? Because we teach trigonometry. I got a 16-year-old and I got an 18-year-old. Both of them are taken. One's in college math. One's in... Brianna's like, what? Is she in trigonometry or algebra two? She's actually in geometry this or year. Or geometry. Right? That's right. Monica's in trigonometry. And I'm thinking to myself, we spend so much time te te teaching skill sets that aren't even going to be utilized in life. But when was the last time in our education system... Or just in life, we talk about the value of being able to communicate with somebody to get a point across, to influence, to change how you talk to yourself. We don't ever even talk about that stuff. No, you know, it'd be great if they had a course in school on communication, not just in college, not because you major in it, but because you need it for life. And we can't, we can't get through this life without being able to communicate. Well, I think it's one of the key skills we need. Yeah, absolutely. And so I want to talk first about the relationship we have with ourselves. And I think about when Stephanie and I, when we really struggled in our relationship, we're going to talk about some of that today too. We didn't even kind of like the people we were in the moments because we were struggling with different events in our life, which kept us in a constant state of being triggered and reacting to the emotion we were feeling instead of responding with love to the situation that was present. And, and we're spending so much time. You, you look one in five adults has a diagnosed mental health issue, mm. right? One in five adults. That's just what's diagnosed. Yeah. I know people That's wait three, four number. months for therapy and they can't even get in to be diagnosed. And so mm. we know, especially during COVID negative self-talk went through the roof. People spent more times alone. They spent more time with themselves. Divorce actually went up um, from an article that I read earlier. And the, the problem is everybody had such a, a poor sense of who they were in their mind. And because they got an opportunity to sit with themselves and stop being so dang busy all the time, <laughs> they sat in those emotions, they sat in those feelings. And it really dictated not only how they went through their day, but how they interacted with other people. Yeah, I agree. I think, I, I actually think a lot of people are still... <sighs> struggling from COVID. Uh, they still haven't really recovered from that. I think a lot of us are still finding the way. And I mean, we're, and now we're starting to get back to our busy lives again. And I think there's still a lot that needs to be dealt with, with, within ourselves mostly. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, I, I think to myself, I heard something recently. It said, we spend so much time listening to ourselves. Mm -hmm. When we should actually be talking to ourselves, which is a great lead in for this first of the four keys to better self-care and better self-talk for you to not only just 
become self-aware during the conversation today of how you are talking to yourself, but then to be able to use these four keys to just living an extraordinary life and fulfilling your potential. And so the first thing I want to talk about, and Steph, why don't you take this one first, is challenging your negative self-talk. There's so many times people are using these definitive words. They say words like always. And look, look, me and Steph keep it real. Stephanie is just typically not really on time or her on time is literally on time. Well, I spent 20 years in the military. So if, if, if you're, if you're on time, you're late. If you're 15 minutes early, then you on time. And so 26 years into our relationship, 23 years of marriage, this is probably still the biggest point of contention, which is really just laughable and comical for us now because we have, well, it is, but not in the moment. (laughs) Yeah. Most of the time, um, because I think we just, respect and love each other where we're at. Um, and we try to limit expectations, which we'll talk about soon. But I used to say a lot, we're always late. We're always this. We're always that. I hate being on time. And so what I would do in moments is I'm sitting there waiting for Stephanie to get ready. And maybe we're running behind <laughs> is I'm thinking to myself, we're always late. Hey, I try to tell him, didn't you hear that country song called waiting on a woman? Yeah. So I'm not the only one. Hey, baby, I, I didn't say you were the only one, but you're the only one for me. So that's making me late. So, and, and you know, what's crazy is, so then I would work myself up with this negative self-talk in this moment of being late and feeling like it's always happening when the reality is, does it really always happen? Is the definitive <laughs> statement really the right one? And then when we're on time, I'm expecting her to be late and I'm frustrated but then we're on time. So this self-talk, the way we challenge, the way we need to start building some self-awareness and thinking about the way that we're talking to ourselves or we're talking about other people, even if we're not verbalizing it out loud, is going to be really crucial to changing our mindset and really focusing us, focusing our energy more on where we're going instead of where we've been or what's kind of jamming us up in the moment, it, it will literally transform your day and take away so much day-to-day angst that you're feeling. So Steph, what, what do you got to say about that? You know, well, so our negative self-talk. Yes. I have to say I'm definitely guilty of this. Uh, I, when it came to even doing this podcast, if you would have told me a year ago, I'd be doing this podcast, I would have laughed at you. And now here I am talking to you guys because um, I mentioned on previous show that I am an introvert. And so this is really uncomfortable for me to do this. And I just always thought I would never get up in front of people. I would never talk Mm -hmm. publicly like this. And also I'm a very private person. So I am shocking myself even that (laughs) I'm sharing all of these things with you guys because all of this is very out of my comfort zone. And, you know, I do tell myself, you know, I I was telling Walt before we did this, you know, I was listening to another podcast myself because I'm trying to fill myself with Mm. more positive content. And I know that I need to listen to positive content to put myself in that frame of mind. So I'm trying to do that consciously more also. And I realized, you know, I was listening to a podcast by Trent Shelton and it was called Stop Playing Small. And, oh man, it was like he was talking right to me. And he was saying on there, you know, you tell yourself, you know, for me, I was always like, oh, little old me, who wants to hear from me? And and this was last week, guys. This was last week when she heard this podcast and then came out the room as she was getting ready, like a lioness ready to just make some things happen. (laughs) So shout out Trent. Good looking out. Appreciate you. (laughs) Yeah. I really came out like, God, that podcast was fire. I mean, I needed to hear that. Like it was like, it just speaking right to me. And I just, I realized that I do talk to myself like that. I do tell myself that, Oh, you know, who wants to hear from you? What do you have to offer? You know, like you're, you were just a stay at home mom. What do you know? You know, who's going to listen to you? That's the kind of stuff I would tell myself, Mm -hmm. not even anybody else. That's what I'm telling myself. So if I'm telling myself that, (laughs) then 
how am I ever going to believe that I can? Well, and what energy are you putting off for just your level of self-confidence as you walk through the world at the same time? Right. And, you know, I got done with that podcast and I'm like, I can take on the world. (laughs) I am ready. (laughs) And what a difference because it's like he gave me permission to feel that way that, you know what? I do have a lot to offer and it, it, and it doesn't come from, you know, titles and all this other stuff. Like titles don't define who you are, mm-hmm. how you show up in the world is what defines who you are. So, you know, if I, if I'm not going to believe in myself, then I'm never going to show up to anybody, even myself. So I just want to, you know, encourage you, everyone out there who's listening that, Start feeding yourself with positive content. You know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I've changed my uh, everything, my, my social media, what I like mm-hmm. on my feed. So now my whole feed shows me it's always like positive quotes and it's all positive things. And, you know, I start my day. My sister-in-law actually gave me this really cool little book of devotional and it's for moms. And I start my day reading one of those and it puts me in a positive frame of mind. And I start the day with more gratitude and I start the day more positive. And, you know, even my Twitter, I only go on my Twitter to, I have a couple of Christian people I like to follow because I like their content, Joel Osteen and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Proverbs and, I, Jakes and whatnot. I read yeah. those things and oh, that's more positivity. And all of that stuff goes into building my self-worth, you know, and now I'm really listening to podcasts that I feel are things I need to hear. And, and it just, all of that stuff is fueling me in a positive way. And it's so crazy how much different we show up because I even told Walt, you know, I'm going to pass it back to him here in a second that, you know, I noticed even in him, like (laughs) this was a little while back, more near the election and stuff. And he was following a lot of political things. Well, Mm -hmm. then he started speaking all this rhetoric, political (laughs) rhetoric and getting all worked up and angry about it. And I'm like, you need to just stop looking at that stuff. Like you're getting fed that, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and it is, you really see people, you can tell it's what they're taking in, you know, watch the news and you're going to think, God, is everybody getting murdered? Is, you know, did anything good happen today? You know, that's the mindset we leave after watching that. So well, well, I think don't jump too far ahead, baby. You, you up in the content. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a minute. But think about this. How many times have you told yourself you're alone? How many times have you told yourself you're going to get your heart broke again? How mm-hmm. many times have you told yourself you don't compare to somebody else? Which, by the way, comparison is a thief of joy. So if you're comparing yourself to people, stop. Just be a better version of you. How many times have you told yourself you can't do it? How many times have you told yourself you never have good luck? Think about all those things. I have literally said every single one of those (laughs) things at some point Mm. or stage in my life to myself. And guess what happened? When I said, I'm always alone. I always feel alone. Nobody understands me. Guess how I moved through the world. Like I was alone and nobody (laughs) understood me, right? So all I did was put myself in this emotionally negative place because I wasn't speaking life into myself. And so I want to really challenge you. The next time you get into the self negative self-talk, actually write it down. Here's what I know unequivocally. We all have a bad day. We all have a bad hour. We all have a bad five minutes. 100%. You might have a bad hour and write down this negative self-talk. And then I want you to write down something that you're grateful for right after that. 100% unequivocally sure about this because I've done it myself. You won't keep having a bad day. You won't, you're going to take actions to move where you're at of feeling alone to get around people or do something to make you not feel isolated. I know because I've done these things. And so make sure that you're challenging your negative self-talk. Like, am I really always alone? Mm -hmm. Or did somebody just say something to me that just put me in a negative mindset right now? Because three hours from then, you don't feel alone anymore. 
yet you can ruin your whole entire day by staying in that space. The second thing I want to talk about is positive affirmations. Yeah. And I just talked about <laughs> a lot about that. Uh, actually, right before this podcast, I just signed up for a thing. Amazon asked me one day, Alexa asked me one day. Um, Don't say that loud. Cause she'd be like, listen to us <laughs> yeah. after that. Come on. It said something about, um, it was at the start of the new year and she just suggested, Hey, there's daily affirmations. Would you like to sign up for it? So I said, sure. So <laughs> I haven't been perfect. I haven't done it every day, but I am trying to do it more. And I actually just did one before I came on this podcast and it had me tell myself, um, I radiate beauty, peace, and love. There you go, baby. <laughs> I'm working on using this button, y'all. Come on, work with me here. <laughs> and I was like, wow, how perfect is that? I'm about to go talk to, you know, the world, the universe out here. And what a great thing to put into my spirit before talking to you mm -hmm. all. And I have to tell you, it works. It really does work. And by the way, then she comes and sits down in this chair for those of you guys who can see us on video. But even for those of you listening, you can hear the difference in her voice. Imagine if she right before I came in here said, ah, I'm just, how's I really been as a mom and nobody cares about what I have to say. And all right, let's go do this podcast. How good would the podcast be? Would we even be helping you right now? No, but because she listened to a podcast that made her feel beautiful and powerful, she came and sat down with that kind of an attitude and that kind of an energy and you saw. Oh, that was just a positive affirmation. What you were saying. That's what I'm saying. It's and a you simple statement I said to myself, repeated to myself before I came on here. And guess what? It made me feel like I have beauty, peace, and love to share with all of you. So, you know, I, and Walt will tell you, because I know he used to think this was really like. Lame. Lame. I, like I'm a man. I don't need to do that. And now, guess what, y'all? He's all about it. And you know what's crazy is, so I'm, you guys know I'm a 20-year military veteran. And yeah. ain't nobody doing no positive affirmations <laughs> in the military, at least not out loud, because you would just straight up get made fun of. What I realized and what I actually love to see what the military is doing now, I saw something not too long ago um, at an Army Reserve base that we were at, and it said the fight isn't always on the battlefield. So even for the military and the veteran community, mental health is being put at the top of the list. And one of the easiest way to transform your mental health is positive affirmations. And so, it, you know, what's interesting as I work with people too, Steph, I found that a lot of people, they actually say the things they believe already. So my challenge to you today mm. is say what you don't quite believe, say what you want to grow your belief in. Yes. Because, uh, I have to say this was like a few months ago maybe longer than that, but sometime in this past year, and I don't know, I was having a bad day and I was kind of crying and telling Walt about it. And he stopped me and he's just like, you know what? Just, I want you to do something with me. <laughs> and he made me, he had some affirmations and he made me say them. And I have to tell you guys, I was struggling. I could not say it to myself. Like, I can't remember exactly what it was. I don't know if it was, I am powerful or it was something like that. There was some, there was some power affirmations. For yeah. Sure. It was something that I, I didn't believe about I think myself. We said, like I am deserving. I'm powerful. Yeah. It was something I didn't yeah. believe about myself. And I was, I couldn't say it at first. And I was really kind of shocked at, at myself. Like, wow, I can't even say this because I don't believe it. And then I did start to say it and he kept making me say it louder and repeat it. And then the more I said it and the louder I got, I started to be like, you know what? Yeah, I am, you know? So, and I know Walt has done this with a few different people because once he saw the power in it, he started to share it with more people because he felt like, man, this really works. And I, I feel mm -hmm. like this can really help people. And so, I mean, y'all, your energy don't have no place to go but up when you're doing affirmations. And what was cool is when me and Stephanie did it, she, after a few minutes, she started laughing and chuckling. And, you know, you could tell I'm an introvert and I don't like to joke around by 
plenty of the times on this podcast. So, um, so, you know, I like to have fun. And so I'm like, jump up and down, baby. Come on, jump up and down. Right, and I let's go. So stupid. Let's just get your body moving. And she's like, I feel stupid. And I'm thinking, man, I don't want to pull a hamstring. You better start jumping. I don't know how much longer I could do this for. I'm like, no, really jump up and down with me. Jump up and down. Jump. Come on, let's do it. And I we say, say even that, even just jumping up and down, it just makes your energy change. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I was really down and not feeling good about myself. And after doing that, I was like, I feel better. I the should do this. Neuroscience more. has a lot of speakers talk about this. Neuroscience has actually shown that physically moving, if you're having a bad day, get your behind up and go walk outside. Go yes. just stand up and get out of the space you're in where that negative energy is at. And move yourself to a different part of your house. Just getting up and physically moving and walking, it releases endorphins. Mm -hmm. And when you have those endorphins and then you're being intentional about the positive affirmations, you could literally transform the scope of your day and what you're doing and where you're headed. And, and I wanna talk about this next piece. And especially because this piece is huge. It's practicing gratitude. Yeah, and you touched on that a little yeah. bit by saying how you should write down things mm -hmm. you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of power in that. I mean, and you said it before that if you practice, you can't be angry and be in gratitude. It's not possible. That's right. And you'll find that when you practice gratitude, you, I mean, you can't help, but you can't be in a bad mood. You can't be. Yeah. Angry. Look guys, here, here's something crazy happening for us right now. It's teaching me a super valuable lesson. I promise you that, but it's potentially going to cost us a whole lot of money. So we were going to sell the current home we were live in, living in, and we were going to move to a different smaller home and downsize because we got one kid away at college. We got one that has two more years left and we just don't need the size of the home that we have. So we put $28,000 down mm -hmm. on this house. And there's a couple of things for me happening in this one, but I'm going to talk about the, the gratitude aspect of it. And so the new home builder won't allow us to back out. And there's a lot of different reasons for the, why we're doing that. Not just because we don't feel like it. Um, and, and they're trying to keep the $28,000. Mm. Now I left corporate America, September of 2021. Shame on you. Fulton Homes. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out not. Uh, and so, so I, I left and in the contract it States, right? They're right. They're right. They have all legal ability to be able to keep that. And we thought that they would give us an exception and they wouldn't. I went to the VP of the company and talked to them about it. Now, normally I would have wanted to push this dude out of his chair as he crossed his arms and uh, leaned I back confirm that. <laughs> and acted so smug in there in that room that we had. However, I didn't feel that way in there. Now it doesn't mean I'm not taking action to still try to reclaim the money that we had, but I just felt grateful. I felt grateful that I haven't got a corporate check since September of 2021. I felt grateful that I've been able to go do um, speaking in multiple different types of forums, both in Canada and all over the U S um, to create income that we can live from within the purpose of what God has planned for us. I feel grateful that we can come on here and do this podcast. I feel grateful that we have money and savings. I feel grateful that I have my health. I feel grateful. I'm not, so stressed out to the point of having a breakdown like I did in corporate America. It could be a lot worse. And when you, I feel grateful that I'm not locked in a basement like I was when I was eight years old. It's called perspective. Mm -hmm. And so as I sat in that gratitude, the level of anger I would have had was eliminated for me in that room talking to this man. And I was able to maintain my character. I was able to maintain my integrity. And then I'm able to move forward. And even if we don't get the money back, I'm in a season of surrender spiritually. So I know God will provide in the way that he's meant to provide. And I'm also grateful as we sign some of these bigger contracts that we have coming, that I make sure that I always protect my personal interests in that. And I don't allow the excitement of what we're doing or the risk that we're taking to overcome the practicality of making sure that that contract is written in a certain way. So I learned a valuable lesson because there's never a failure. There's always a lesson. And I have so much more to be grateful for than that. And I'm talking about something monetarily at this point, but this is anything in your life. 
This is anything in your life. They, during the same time, they replaced our, the engine in our two-year-old car. They replaced the shocks in our two-year-old car. We got my life hero, my aunt, she got some, some health news that, that wasn't great. Stephanie's mother got some health news that wasn't great. We had a lot that could send us into this negative space where we wouldn't even have been doing this podcast. But instead, we just chose to walk in gratitude and true surrender spiritually, taking the action meant for us to continue to take. And that's reaching you today and talking about these four keys to just better self-talk. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about gratitude. I think it's uh, it's one of the main keys to living a happy life. Uh, there's nothing better than that to keep you, like he said, in the right perspective. And we should always be grateful for what we do have and stop focusing on what we don't have. Um, mm -hmm. Because when we focus on what we don't have, we just, you know, what's, what good is going to come from it? And it doesn't mean that you don't get, have disappointments. It doesn't mean you don't have struggles. It doesn't mean you don't have to take a day and lick your wounds a little bit <laughs> sometimes. But if you woke up today, you got something to be grateful <laughs> for. Because there's a lot of people in this world that didn't. If you slept in a bed, mm. you got something to be grateful for. If you drink clean water. <laughs> yeah. If you got people who love you, you got something to be thankful for. There's a lot to be thankful for that ranges from really high level to just the basic needs that we have like food, shelter, and water every single day. And so I want to move on here and talk about the fourth key to better self-talk. And that's, this one's huge. Oh, mm -hmm. Look, you ever heard that saying, you are the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with the most? Oh, yeah. Thank goodness Stephanie is one of those people for me. <laughs> Hopefully I can be one of those people for her. So... <laughs> <laughs> You got to surround yourself. The fourth key, surround yourself with positive people and set boundaries with the people that don't bring positivity into your life. And we were just talking to our daughter a couple of days ago um, that's in college about some things could happen in a college and those people that are just energy vampires mm -hmm. um, that just drain the life out of you that are always complaining, always in a negative headspace. And here you are trying to be positive. They immediately throw you in that space. So, Steph, I think you're the one who told her that, like, you got to watch them energy vampires, baby. So <laughs> talk about that a little bit. Uh, I do. You can tell that you can just tell immediately when you're around someone that their energy is just always kind of down or negative or, you know, every time they're around you, they're complaining and they they're not finding the gratitude. And it really does. It's hard. and you know, and Walt mentioned before too, like, and that's not to say that everybody, you know, we're all going to have down times. Mm -hmm. And, but in general, when you're around someone, they shouldn't be like that every time you see them. If they are, then you, you know, if they're on the majority, they're in a good mood and they're positive, and then you see them not doing well, then you know, you know, they need a friend or they need mm -hmm. someone to listen or, you know what I mean? So, there's a big difference between that and someone who's just, it's like they cannot see the good in anything. And those they are the could, They could people. win the lottery. <laughs> they, could, they could win $5 million and be mad they didn't win, they didn't win 10. And they're going to find those kind something of people. negative about it. Yeah. And I really do feel like, and when you're around those people, you tend to start to become where you are like, I don't want to mm -hmm. be around them because every time I'm around them, they're dragging me down and my energy goes down and, we want to be around someone who's uplifting and, you know, appreciates things. And, and it's very apparent and it really does affect our everyday mood. And so we do need to be conscious of the people we surround ourselves with. It does make a big difference. Yeah. And you owe you to protect your peace. You don't owe anybody anything. And I heard this other day too. You got to love people enough not to continue to carry them all the time. You got to be okay saying, I love you enough to take you off my back and have you stand right next to me and walk this journey in the capability you have right alongside of me. You have the ability to do that, but I can't carry you anymore. My heart can't be heavy every single time that we talk. I'm trying to transform myself for those people who need the best version of me. And so I can't be around this all the time. You have to be willing to create boundaries with others 
to protect your own peace. And that doesn't mean you don't love them. That doesn't mean they're not beautiful souls who are just hurting in the moment. That doesn't mean you just run away from people the first time they say they had a bad day either. No. That is really loving people where they're at. And even in our journey of what we're doing now, there's going to be people that we've met that are in our life for a reason, a season, <laughs> or a lifetime. We got people that we almost start, started going into business with and some things happened and they just were in a really negative space and we just didn't want that energy around us, um, even though we tried to help them initially. And there's people that we've met that are like rocket boosters, like lifting mm -hmm. us and they're carrying us into the stratosphere. And at some point, those rocket boosters that carry the old school space shuttle into mm -hmm. space, they start falling off, right? Yeah, I love they, that analogy. Because they're, they're there for a season. And then there's some people on the damn space shuttle with you <laughs> that are going to be there for your whole life, that are going to go into orbit with you, that are going to be a huge piece of what you do. Even in mine and Stephanie's marriage, like this is literally for me anyway, the best our marriage has ever been. I feel like we had our struggles, especially 12, 13 years ago, and we're going to go to relationships next with other people. But this is the best our relationship has been for us. And we're around each other more now than we've ever been. But you know what we're doing? We're dreaming about the future. We're talking about how can we impact more people? How can we help change lives? How can we help save families so that we break generational traumas? Even if we don't realize that we did, how can we move through the world in a way that does that? And what's coming into our space is people with the same mentality, but more importantly, because she's a person that I spend the most time with. Well, we're working on a common goal and a dream and you know, mm -hmm. we're focusing on positive things that we want out of life. and. Yep. So when we're on and we're on the same page, all of those things contribute to our positivity and how we show up for everyone mm -hmm. around us. And I'm going to add one plus one thing to that. So we got four things. Challenge your, ne your negative self-talk, positive affirmations, practice gratitude and surround yourself with positive people and set boundaries with others who always bring that toxic mentality in. And Stephanie touched on this. So I just want to talk about it real quick before we move into relationships with people. And that's content, right? I don't care mm -hmm. who you are, how bulletproof you are. If you're around negative stuff all the time, what are you feeding your mind, your heart, your soul? Are you feeding your spirituality every single day? Are you watching the news that's meant to divide us? Literally, that's how they make their money is by dividing us. Are you listening to rhetoric that's divisive? Are you? I mean, I was scrolling through, um, I answered some stuff back on Instagram to some people and then a couple of videos popped up, right? So like if you got a flood video of some crazy raging torrental downpours in Pakistan, I'm probably going to watch that because it's wild. And I'm watching these videos and all of a sudden this fight video, you got kids that look 16, 17 years old fighting the world star hip hop stuff. What a negative thing to put in your mindset. We're celebrating applause and people are liking it and commenting on it. And I, I, so I blocked it. I don't even want that in my space for a second. But years ago, I probably would have watched it, right? So it's this evolution that happens over time where you really protect your peace by watching what content you have. So listening to this podcast is a great <laughs> opportunity to have some positive content. Let's go. <laughs> Listen to some other podcasts, reading books, watching movies that fill your soul, talking to people, having real like not superficial conversations, having some of them deep conversations going and go like doing things that you enjoy, but more importantly, doing the things that are going to fill your mentality and spirit with positivity will change the way you move. And then as you get that piece, as you get that piece of you, that's been missing, you won't allow things to come in your space. That's negative. No, I agree. So let's, let's move on because we're, we're hitting 35 minutes already. Let's go. Um, you know, when we started, Stephanie was like, we're going to be able to go for like 45 minutes, babe, 30, 45 minutes. I was like, yeah, it seems hard to you actually get in there. And start doing it. Um, <laughs> so now we're going to talk about the four keys to having extraordinary relationships. How do you really elevate your relationship with others? And the number one thing you can do is listen to people. Mm. Stephanie's amazing at this. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Talk about that stuff. Typically, if you're an extrovert, you do a lot of talking. You don't necessarily do a lot of listening. Don't you judge me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and vice versa. <laughs> Introverts are good at listening, not always the best at talking. So yeah, listen is vital. Uh, you can't take in if, if you're only talking all the time or when someone else is talking, you're already thinking about what you're going to say next, then you're not really taking in and absorbing what yeah. you're listening to. So I think it is very key to, and, and sometimes in a relationship, sometimes, especially women, I think, I mean, this, maybe not, but I know for me, sometimes we just need you to listen. Like sometimes we just need to vent and mm. we just need you to listen and we don't necessarily need you to solve it or, you know, because I know a lot of men go into problem solving mode. As soon as you tell them mm -hmm. you're having a problem, they're trying to figure out how to fix it for you. And sometimes we don't need the man to fix it. We just need a sounding board. We just need someone we can, mm -hmm. we just need to release this from our, <laughs> our soul and get it out there. And like just speaking it out makes us feel better. So sometimes we just need someone to listen. Well, you know what's cool about that? I think last week we talked about one of the four keys to living an extraordinary life and how to create a, that real safe internal environment where you can thrive. One of the things we talked about was creating a safe space for other people too. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like a superpower for women, the first key was speak your truth. Right. And I think when I was in corporate America and I, I just was miserable, man, and I couldn't even see the forest through the trees. And a nervous breakdown is what took me out the game. And I was having all this success from the outside looking in. People were like, you're so lucky. Promoted four times in five years. I was an executive in a Fortune 3. I'm a retired naval officer, a beautiful family. We have all the things and the, the big stuff. And I didn't care anymore. I was freaking miserable. But I didn't, I didn't even know how to voice that. Because as a man, and men, you know, we wear this big old R on our chest for resilience. It's like, Captain Resilience to the rescue. Dun, 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 dun. But meanwhile, we're suffering, living in quiet desperation. This is a reason men commit suicide 3.8 times more than women. That's crazy. 3.8 times more than women. But I believe it because men most of the time won't share their feelings. Right. And so we all got to get better at listening to those people who need us in the moments without judgment. We'll talk about that in a second. But I think as men, listen to what Stephanie just said. I would just want to edify what she said. And I do this. I do this still. And I've got two daughters too. So I got to really pump the brakes. Anytime somebody comes to me with a problem though, mm -hmm. I'm a, I live, I grew up in chaos. So I could live in that and think of some, you know, contingency plans for the contingency <laughs> plans in about two seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you come to me with an issue, I'm going to be like, well, let's do this. Let's make this happen. Let's go, let's go a route, B route, C route. Let's see, we can do all these things. Meanwhile, they're just like, I, I don't even want to talk to you now because you're just not even listening to me. Yes. And then I will get offended. Like I'm listening. What you mean? I'm not listening to you, but, and I'm trying to push them forward out of where they're at, but really to get past where they were at, they just needed to vent for a second and they needed somebody to listen. Mm -hmm. And the next piece of this is important. They needed me to have empathy and respond with love. Sometimes all they needed was me to say, I love you and give them a hug mm -hmm. and know that I was there. So man, if you're listening to that, it got to the point where I would ask them, okay, are you, you just telling me, or do you want me to help you solve it? And they would say, I do, I'm just telling you. Okay. And then I just had to really focus in on not trying to think of how to solve the problem <laughs> as they're telling me, even though they said that, just hold my tongue mm -hmm. and just do what they're asking in the moment. Yeah, we we had a couple different. I mean, because Walt and I had to work through this. This is part of this was part of our growth as a couple, and this was part of our communication with each other. Was at some point I finally had to tell him that because I, he was always trying to just tell me how to fix it, and mm -hmm. a lot of the time I was like, "No, I just need to vent about this. I just need to get it off my chest. I just, you know, I don't need a solution right now. I just want to." complain. You know? <laughs> Sometimes you just need to do that. Get it off your chest. You can move forward. That's all you needed to do. <laughs> yeah. And, but I want to say too, for the ladies out there, if your man is exhibiting behavior where 
you can tell he's had a bad day or, you know, he's reacting in a way you don't think is, you know, like it seems a little over the top for what it should be. Or, you or like you say, it's out of character for yeah, what the norm is. Yeah, out of character for them that they may need you to just kind of check in and ask them, hey, is everything okay? Or what happened today? Or, you know, did something happen? Or, you know, they need to feel like you're opening up that space for them because they're not going to willingly just share feelings with you. But if you kind of open that for them, they're going to be more likely to open up to you. But we have to create that space. So, you know, because for them, a lot of times it's going to show physically, not for us, like we talk it out for men, their first reaction is to be physical. So, and you can usually tell like if they're, you know, they're, and like he said, out of character, that they're kind of like just snippy and irritable. And, you know, it's a good time to just be like, Hey, is everything okay? Yeah. When Stephanie says physical, she doesn't, she doesn't mean getting physical with you. I just want to clarify that. For me, I would have a bad day and I would go play basketball. Or sometimes right? I would have a bad day and I would lift weights. I, there yes. were things that I would go do to alleviate the pressure and the strain of the moment when I wasn't necessarily prepared to talk about what was bothering me. As I did some healing, I realized the power of speaking your truth, so I don't really shy away from that. But I still got to be intentional. It still takes real intentionality for me to say, okay. You're not being Captain Resilience. It's not helpful for you to hold it in. Have a conversation about what's bothering you so that you can just get the support in the moment that you need. Or another way we learned to communicate that was <laughs> we kind of told each other, okay, if if I get really snippy with you and it was like unwarranted, then just say something like, okay, we're a little cranky today or something or you know or, just or, say or like, something I didn't deserve that. yeah just say something that lets me know hey i'm kind of out of line you mm -hmm. know or i'm being kind of rude right now without having to be mean about it mm -hmm. but it was like that was our way of you know we can let each other know hey like that wasn't okay but you know we can talk about it but mm -hmm. and and by the way it takes a lot of strength to respond with empathy and love when somebody's reacting to a trigger that 99% of the time has nothing to do with you either. When somebody's reacting with that trigger and coming at you crazy and, and being mad, like, I'll, why don't we have dinner? Like I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm this, I'm that. I've been working all day. You don't appreciate what I'm doing to say, Hey, it's okay, babe. Like I'm, like, we're going to eat some dinner. I, I love you. Did you have a bad day? <laughs> because you know what happened? Stephanie's done that to me before. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I just did have a bad day. But it, because she responded with love, it diffused. Mm -hmm. And then we were able to have an adult conversation when I was being a little immature and emotional in the moment. Yeah, I challenge you guys. Uh -huh. The next time someone comes at you in an aggressive way or, you know, they're really irritable or you know, just not the tone you like. I just challenge you to try that. Try, try responding in love in a way that is, and by that, I mean, like we just said, where, you know, you're not, you don't react back. You kind of either pause and don't say anything or you check in. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, it's almost impossible to stay mad, for that person to stay mad or keep you know, they're going to realize like, oh, I guess that wasn't very nice or, you know, like they're going to kind of retract how they were because it, it hits them like, oh, I guess that was kind of rude or, you know. And, and by the way, this really works 80 to 90% of the time. And so when we talk about some of these things that these keys that we're going to give on every episode, we're thinking about the 80% solution. There's always exception to the rules. So you also need to use your best judgment in it. But be self-reflective with how you're reacting in the moment when somebody's reacting to you and how that reaction triggers another reaction. And then you <laughs> get in the crazy cycle and go downhill. So let's talk about the next one. This is huge. The third key to having extraordinary relationships with others is to strip away the expectations and judgment. But I want to key on, on expectations right now. Strip away the expectations you have of them. 
Now, that doesn't mean you don't have requirements for how you want to be treated. You should always have requirements for the self-respect and love that you deserve. That should be a non-negotiable. But the expectations that people have of each other is literally a relationship killer. What do you <laughs> got to say about that, Sarah? Hey, just stole my... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I didn't see your notes. <laughs> yeah, I say that a lot. I I really do. I mean, Walt and I could pro- we could do a whole ec- whole episode on oh, yeah. expectations because it really is. I call it a relationship killer because we we tend to hold people to expectations that we wouldn't even do ourselves. You know, we're expecting that person to show up a certain way when we wouldn't even do that. So. This is the thing. And then I think we're, we're not good about communicating those expectations. Like we tend to just have these expectations, but we've never told the other person that we're expecting it. We just assume they know or expect them to know. And they don't, if you don't communicate that. So. Well, here's, here's what happens. So I think about when Stephanie and I, we were married, what, 11, 12 years when we kind of had our come to Jesus moment in our marriage. We had two little kids and we love our babies well, that are now young women, but kids <laughs> suck the life out of relationship. Look, if you're listening right now, you probably laughing because you're like, good Lord. Yes, they do. We couldn't even hold each other's hand no more because we're holding the kids' hands. I come home from work and Stephanie's exhausted and I'm like expecting some love, by the way. She's mad because I got to go to work. Um, lucky me. And she's been stuck at home with the kids all day, which I'm going to tell you stay at home moms. Like y'all some super women because um, just mothers in general, actually, you guys do so much. Us men do get away um, with doing a little bit less. And when you add toddlers in the mix, that's a whole nother ball game right there. So, and, and what I found is I could come home from work and And Stephanie's a busybody, so she never really sits down. She just keeps herself going all day. And the house would be clean. And the kids are bathed. And, you know, she's she's got a plan for dinner, but dinner ain't done yet, right? And so then I'm, like, thinking to myself, and you guys can tell I like food because I talk about dinner a little bit. (laughs) And and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, I've been up since 5.30, 6 a.m. It's it's 6 p.m. I'm super hungry, and I'm feeling hangry. Walt gets hangry. And and I am – not focused on and being in gratitude of the things that you did do, the four things that you did do out of the five that I expected you to do. And so what do you focus on in that moment? Because you don't have gratitude for the things that they are doing, you focus on the one thing you expected them to do that they didn't. And then here comes a drip of resentment. And that drip of resentment continues to come and it turns into um, you know, a faucet turned on and then the next thing you're drinking out of fire hose and the resentment is real and you have this moment in your marriage where you're going to get a divorce or you're going to fight to save your marriage. And that's really where we were at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, it's like he said with, you know, I think he had expectations that like we made an agreement when we when I quit working, when we, when I got pregnant with my first daughter, we had a lot of talks and before she was born, right before she was born, I quit my job and we decided that I would stay at home and he would be the breadwinner. And, but with that, I said, yeah, I plan on taking care of pretty much everything at the house. You won't really have to worry about anything at the house and you do your job. Mm -hmm. And that was our, we kind of just, we agreed on that. That's what worked for us. But I did not realize what I was in for when, I had, when that baby came. And, oh, man, I, you know, I could do episodes on this because I. Well, we're going to do a nothing future episode will prepare on you. postpartum and the communication that needs to happen between men and women in that moment. We're going to do one at some point, but go ahead. Yeah, there's nothing that will prepare you for a child. I had nothing. I mean, I read all the books and I tried to be as prepared as I could be. And I tried to really know like, what to expect. I tried to know all, you know, I just really was like, 
I read that book, what to expect when you're expecting on all mm -hmm. of those things. I was like, I just want to know what to expect. And I thought I kind of knew. And then phew, you just don't know. You don't know what kind of baby you're going to have. And they're all different. What works for one doesn't work for the another. Like, even my own two children, they were not the same at all. And I was overwhelmed. I was exhausted. I was overwhelmed. And I think I even, you know, reflecting back, was in a depression at times. And I didn't know how to communicate that to him. I mean, I tried, but mm -hmm. I didn't really know how to communicate it. And I don't know if he would have ever gotten it anyway, because, you know, he's a man. He's not, he doesn't go through the same thing. You know, he didn't carry the baby. He doesn't mm -hmm. have the crash of hormones. He doesn't have the effects to his body. He's not going to understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And, and honestly, I see this in a lot of marriages and, and this is what, why he says, you know, we love our children and I'm not blaming children at all. I'm just saying <laughs> no, they're beautiful. <laughs> I wish there was something to prepare couples more for what they are and for when they have children, because the woman does become very consumed with her children because they literally need you for everything. They can't do anything for themselves. And a lot of times the women feel like, you know, I've had this child on me all day and they just want a break from being needed. <laughs> and then the husband, but he doesn't experience it in the same way. And he's still wanting that from his wife and she doesn't have the capacity to give it to him, but he can't really understand that. Right. And I think, you know, as men, typically men are f more physical in nature, right? We like physical touch, one of our primary love languages for most, for a lot of men. And, you know, you would come home and I mean, let's be real, you know, you're married and, and you've got two kids. So, you know, what happens in the bedroom to get them children sometimes. And so you think that these things are going to happen and you've got an expectation as a man for it to happen. You don't actually have any empathy or respond with love to your wife who's just exhausted because like you're thinking about your needs in those moments. And I know mm -hmm. for me, it was like physical touches, getting my back tickled, physical touches, her rubbing my hair while we're watching a show. Like it's not all just things that happen in the bedroom. And, and I think this is an important piece of this. And so for me, I felt abandoned in my childhood. I felt unloved in my childhood. The physical touch I got was abusive, not loving. And so when I went from having a loving touch to not having one, it really triggered in something inside of me. I didn't realize that at the time that I felt abandoned and I felt unloved. And that's where you bring that trauma into the relationship. And so, and then she wasn't meeting my expectations. And now I'm pissed about certain things not happening. Right, like this is going to seem probably sound stupid, but you know, I think he kind of had an expectation like dinner's going to be done because you've been home all day. And, but he didn't know what I was really dealing with, with young children. Like <laughs> they're so unpredictable. And sometimes it's like they're little tyrants and you're dealing with little tyrants that you try to have control over, but <laughs> let's be honest they're I mean, they have a little mind of their own. And so, you know, and like I said, there's a lot of that that's very exhausting and, you know, so he's only look, you know, he's only looking at it from how he feels in that moment. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm reacting versus responding, mm -hmm. right? It's emotion versus situational response. And then like he said, you know, the things like, you know, just finding some time to sit down together and be able to hold each other's hands. Cause like I said, I had babies on me all day. So I was like, I don't want to be touched at all. Well, not only and that, but, the, but then we would find time to sit down and somebody peed in the bed. <laughs> Somebody got sick, like somebody yeah. woke up two hours into their bedtime and was crying. Like yeah. there was always something. And so I think if you're in that toddler phase, right? Just know we understand. Or just, yeah, no doubt. We've been there, done that, got a t-shirt. And I think as you strip away expectations of what somebody should do for you, and again, it doesn't mean you don't have requirements for how you're going to be treated and not be treated. But as you strip away expectations and stay in gratitude of all the amazing things your partner is doing, your friend is doing, your parent is doing, and they're trying to show up in their own capacity, but they're living in their own emotion of the things maybe they have and haven't dealt with or the rough day that they had or whatever it is, and you start to respond with love, the combination of that empathy, responding with love and stripping away expectations will absolutely transform your relationships 
it will transform your relationships. And that doesn't mean you stay where you're miserable. That doesn't mean you stay in a situation that's not safe. That just means 80% of the time you can take these tools and you can really utilize them. And I want to talk about this last one because, you know, you're worried about 30 minutes. We're 55. <laughs> so I want to talk about this last one. And that's, cl this is your responsibility. If you're listening right now, this is your responsibility. I'm going to keep it real with you right now. You need to clarify what you need with your partner or friends and stop assuming they know. I'm going to tell you, I, there's a, there's a, a incredible human being at the church men's group I go to. So him and I talk about this a lot. He's been through some things. And recently he's like, oh, my wife, she just said she's not happy and she's not this and she's not that. And I said, well, have you really asked her? Like, what does she need from you? in order to feel more fulfilled. I said, a lot of it is what she needs to do for herself to feel fulfilled. And so he went home and he goes, Hey, I feel like I'm doing the things that you've asked me to do these expectations that you have of me. What do you need more help with around here? And she goes, well, we've been together 10 plus years. If you don't know by now, then I don't know what to tell you. What a crappy freaking response. So you, it's but that tells me that she had a lot of built up resentment and she It's a, it's about her, she not even him. She couldn't hear him in that moment. She wasn't it's, listening. It's about her, not about him in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. The really, right? It's her doing those self talk and working on her inner child and her inner um, you know, happiness so that she could fill her own cup in that moment. And sometimes you don't even know what you want anymore. And by <laughs> the way, what I wanted at 25 is different than what I want at 46, Stephanie and I learned during that come to Jesus moment in our relationship. And we were so blessed to go to the love and respect conference. If you've never heard of that shout out, go check it out. Love and respect. I can't remember the two doctors that created this conference. It changed our marriage coming out of this season of our marriage. We committed to truly commit, um, communicating the things that we needed from the other one. And if we feel like some of those needs aren't being fulfilled and we feel a little bit of resentment trickling in, that we have a conversation way before there's any anger because you can easily pivot and start to help fulfill the needs of your partner and compromise with your partner to create a healthier relationship. But it's up to you to communicate what you need in the way you need it mm -hmm. to the person who wants to love you to the best of their ability. So I was hoping, <clears throat> I told Walt, <laughs> I always hate when people talk about, you know, they ask you what's the key to having a good relationship and people always say communication and that's all they say. And that doesn't tell me anything. So I wanted to give you some real clear examples of what we mean by how to communicate those things. So <clears throat> I was just going to say just a little story, just, and this is something really simple, you know, so Walt used to give me, uh, a dozen red roses every Valentine's Day. And red's my favorite color. I and do, I do, and I love flowers. And so I did love them. But after a while, I just was like, uh, I hate that they die so fast. Like, you know, he'd give it to me and two days later they were dead. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, it's such a waste. And so and I think he noticed that my reaction when he was giving it to me that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking like it. I was happy. The reaction I expected you to have when <laughs> yes. I gave it to you, yes. So he had an expectation of how I would react, and I didn't. And so, but then he asked me in that moment, well, do you even want flowers? You know, do you even want this? <laughs> and I told him, well, you know, because I didn't want to, I don't want to seem ungrateful either. You know, it is, it is awesome that he gave me the gift, and I was appreciative of that. So I didn't want to act like I don't love it. So, of course, I was not feeling like it would be right to communicate at that moment. But since he opened it up to me, I, I did tell him, well, actually, no, you don't need to get me flowers every time. Mm -hmm. And I love flowers. And I was like, or even you can mix it up, get me some other kind of flowers that aren't roses and something that will last longer. Cause I'd rather, you know, have them last a week or two or get me something else because I'd rather have something I can keep and is lasting. So, but if we don't communicate that, mm -hmm. he's never going to know. He's assuming that that's what I wanted and it wasn't. And I'm assuming that because at one point she told me that is what she right. wanted, but as she grew and changed and 
you know, sometimes our needs change, right? It, that communication needed to happen. And this is kind and of, this a, is simple. I mean, yeah. this is small stuff, but this is the kind of stuff that it is this simple, small stuff mm-hmm. that we just assume they know, or they understand. And they don't, if we don't communicate that, if we don't specifically tell them, yeah, yeah. they don't know. Cause you, cause then you start to feel petty about it. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, look, I'm doing this for her. And she doesn't even appreciate it. And, uh, right. God, I'm, you know, busting my butt and this. Meanwhile, they do appreciate it, but maybe you didn't voice what appreciation looks like to you. Cause what appreciation looks like to you, what appreciation looks like to Stephanie and me are three different things. Mm-hmm. So oh, ask, I'm- ask yourself, ask your spouse clarifying questions. Ask your friends or relationships clarifying questions. If you're unsure, maybe they don't know that you need to, you listen to this podcast right here and that you're going to start talking about what you need, but ask them what they need. Just open the dialogue up Mm -hmm. so you can create healthier relationships that will have a direct correlation to your level of happiness in your life. And I'm going to say that's, that's the biggest key is key in on their reaction to things. If you can tell they're not giving you the reaction you expected, right? Because you have an expectation, Mm -hmm. but they're not showing the reaction that you expected, then that's the time to ask specifically, you know, whatever that question is. Yeah. You know, is this what you like? Open that up so that they don't have to feel uncomfortable telling you because, you know, you will like you, you don't want to make the other person feel bad. So mm-hmm. you'll just never say it, but then that doesn't lead to happy relationships. You have well, and by to the way, when you ask them, is this what you like? What was the first key we talked about? Then you got to listen, mm-hmm. right? And you got to respond with love and empathy and understanding and kindness and yeah. then compromise in your relationship to give that person what they need not what you think they need by actually what you personally need from them. Yeah. And this was something I know we're, we're We're going to be quick on this one because yeah, I wanted to get into the five love languages a little bit. If you've read that book, if you haven't, I highly recommend reading it. Mm -hmm. Um, It, it improves all your relationships, not just Mm -hmm. marriage or girlfriend, boyfriend, but all relationships. And we use it with our children and everything. Um, But what he just said is, you know, we tend to give people what we would want. We tend to, that's how we love them. We give them what we would want, but that other person doesn't necessarily want to be loved the same way, or they don't need the same things. You know, like just quickly, for instance, while he feels like his key love language is, and we, and most of us need a little bit of all of them, but there's ones that are more important to you. So to him, it was physical touch. And by that, you know, (laughs) he'll say not necessarily, you know, everybody's going to think that's in the bedroom. No, it's things like holding hands, Mm -hmm. hug, like he said, tickling his hair, just those, you know, just the physical contact. I mean, every dude likes his back, likes his back rub that feels (laughs) incredible. Yeah. Who doesn't like that? I mean, I love it too, but you know, for me, mine is really quality time. I want him to spend quality Mm -hmm. time with me. That's how I feel loved. You got it out, baby, because we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for a long time, I didn't, though. You know, when you're working in corporate America, you're working so many hours, I wasn't getting the quality mm-hmm. time I needed. So, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, but if he's trying to give me all this physical love, and that's not really what fills my bucket, and I'm, that's right. you know, and then he starts getting upset, like, why isn't she receiving this very well? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. why, why does she act like she's distant and doesn't like this because, because you're not giving me what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause I'm giving you what I need, Mm -hmm. not what you need. As a matter of fact, you know what, we're going to stop here today and we're going to talk about the five love languages next week. I think that's a really good segue into that because it will transform your relate, your intimate relationships. It will transform your friend relationships. It will transform your relationship with your children Cause like Stephanie said, we had them read the book too, figure out what their love language was. And then we made sure to love them in the way that they needed, not the, and so we've got some really good examples for that too. Um, so I don't want to give too much more of that. So next week, join us on episode four. We're going to talk about the five love languages 
and continuing to elevate our relationships. And so we gave you today four keys to better self-talk and creating that internal peace and freedom that we all strive for that sometimes we feel like is just out of reach. Start utilizing that stuff today. We gave you the four keys, how to elevate your relationship with others. Continue. And I challenge you, listen to this episode with your loved one. If Mm. you're struggling and your relationship is struggling, the reason Stephanie and I are super transparent about our stuff is because we've been through the grind. We've been through (laughs) the struggle, man. Love is work. Love is work. You don't make it 26 years without having some struggles. You have to be intentional. And the growth that has to happen with that. And so be intentional. Even if you listen to this, listen to it with your loved one, but don't listen to it and think what they need to get from it. You listen to it and see what you need to get from it to be a better version of you and to be that person for them and raise your capacity, your vibration and your love that they need to help become the best version of them. And that's where you build a true powerful unity. So you know what? That's it, babe. You got anything else you want to just run down real quick with? No, that's Uh, it. I just think that was it. Be be intentional in your relationships. Um, It requires it. You won't, you won't have a fruitful relationship without it. And be intentional with yourself. Good Lord. It took me so long to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Um, Be intentional with yourself. And so look, don't do those affirmations. (laughs) Yes. Do the affirmations, fellas. (laughs) <laughs> do the affirmations. Um, and so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and connect with us on Instagram at Legacy Warrior Podcast. We would love to hear what you think. We would love to hear ideas that you have for the show, um, what kind of guests you might like for us to bring on, because here in about three, four more weeks, we're going to start bringing on some guests every other week. So until the next time, keep growing, taking steps forward, and... Leave this world a little bit better than you found it. See you guys next week.